fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video, which I find to be very exciting today. We are going to talk about why most teachers propose that zero to the zero of power is undefined algebraically. And yeah, I don't know about many teachers who have ever, I basically know about no teacher, who has ever really elaborated on why this is not defined algebraically. Most of them just say put it in your calculator, it's going to spit out nah, 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 not defined and that's basically it. This is what this is all about most of the time. But there's actually a pretty simple reason for it, two simple reasons basically. We are going to strive for a contradiction today and at the end I'm going to talk about how you can actually define a value to zero to the zero of power analytically. It's going to be quite exciting. We are going to talk a tiny little bit about functions and limits at the end. But at first let's talk about the algebra. Now, I would like to recap what it meant for something to be raised to the zero of power. For example, a to the zero of power, we define this to be equal to one for all a not equal to zero. Okay, so for example, we could say that um, three to the zero of power, second prime to the zero of power is nothing but one. But why was it like this? Let us recap a tiny little bit what we did. So last time around we did um, some kind of 3 to the nth power is nothing but 3 to the n plus 0 of power because if you don't place any apple next to your n apples then you still have your n apples. Then we used exponentiation rules, solved an equation and then we were basically done defining that this is equal to 1. But there's actually another way you could be able to define it using fractions. One. It's nothing but 3 to the 0 of power. But what is a 0 exactly? A 0 is for example, if I give you an apple and take it away from you, then you are going to be sad, you are going to have no vitamins at all. But this doesn't matter. You have 0 apples and that's the point of the analogy here. For example, 1 minus 1. 0 is nothing but 1 minus 1. We know about this. Now we can use the exponentiation rule for same base and different exponents, leaving us with 3 to the first power times 3 to the negative 1 to power. Something to the first power is just a thing in itself and 3 to the negative 1th power is nothing but 1 third because we can turn the negative sign into a vinculum, put the 1 on top and then we are basically done turning this into a fraction. So this is 3 times 1 third. And it made sense visually speaking. Those are 3 out of 3 parts of a cake. If you let them lie on the table, if you cut it in 3 parts, then it's still your 1 cake. 3 over 3 is nothing but 1. You can do the same spiel for 5 to the 0 of power. It's going to be 5 over 5. It's going to be 1. But what about 0 to the 0 of power? What is this going to evaluate to? Is it going to be 1? Probably not. I wouldn't make the video on this topic otherwise. Now, just going by the same steps here, we would arrive at 0 times 1 over 0. Uh, we can divide by 0. I have proposed it here on this channel up until now. I'm going to make an exciting video soon about why you can divide by 0 over on the fractions place. So stay tuned for that. We can divide by 0. It's going to run into contradiction because 1 over 0 could be literally everything. Okay? It could be your mama, it could be your dad speaking as, as variables. It could be free, for example. We don't know exactly. So this leaves us as a con uh, at a contradiction with this little arrow denoting the contradiction here. We don't know what value we should assign to this thing. Now there's another reason for why we can assign a real value for zero to the zero of power algebraically speaking. At first let us go back to something to the zero of power. Okay, so if we have some n to the zero of power for n not equal to zero, we know that this is going to vary to one. Now we are going to look at something completely different, namely when we have a zero base and some kind of non-negative exponent. Namely, we are going to have 0 to the 5th um, power, for example. 0 to the 5th power by the verbal definition of a exponentiation is nothing but 0 times 0 times 0 times 0 times 0. 0 multiplied with itself exactly 5 times. Something times 0, we have proven this before, is going to be 0. So if we have 5 times 0, this is just going to be 0 overall. Okay, so if we have 0 to the nth power in some way, where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 5 over 2, I don't care. Okay, something positive not equal to 0. If we have 0 to the nth power, this is going to lead us to 0. Okay, now we have two statements here. On the one hand, if we raise something to the 0 of power, it's going to give us 1. If we have 
zero as the base and we raise it to some positive power, it's going to be zero. Now what is going to happen if we take zero to the zero of power now? I mean, on the one hand, by this definition, we have that zero to the zero of power is going to be one. <laughs> okay, this is one of the cases that could hold. On the other hand, if we take zero as the base and then put a zero exponent into here, it's going to be zero. Now, what exactly is it out of those two? Is it now zero or is it one? We don't know. We can't really assign a value to zero to the zero of power here because I mean, it could be literally everything. This is what we said here. It, it could be one half, for example. It could be zero, it could be one. We don't know. So from this casework alone, we have no idea what it's going to evaluate to. And this leads us to another contradiction because we can assign two values to one expression here. It just doesn't work out. Except for using analysis in some way. If we make use of analysis and functions, this is like the little more advanced topic here and maybe there's already a playlist out on limits and stuff like this where I go into more detail if you're watching three years from now, for example. Then we are going to define ourselves a function which is just an exponential function of some kind, okay? x to the x power, which makes sense because this is somehow, I mean, if we plug in uh, 3 into the x, it's going to be 3 to the third power, for example. Now, what will to happen if we plug, if we plug in, I'm, I'm going to do it like this, if we plug in 0 into the x here? Most teachers, when they get to analysis, like to do a proof by calculator. They are just going to use the calculator and let the students approach zero. So putting in smaller and smaller values for x into this equation one after another. And over time, there's going to be a certain result. If this right here is to one, our graph is going to look something like this. And actually, our function is going to approach one. The closer we get to zero, from the right, okay? We are going to approach zero from the positive values only. So like you, you put in one, okay? This is one to the one of power and then zero dot one. This is zero dot one to the zero dot one of power and so on and so forth. You're going to get closer and closer to zero and for some reason it's going to go to one overall. This means in an analytical kind of sense, we can apply a value to zero to the zero of power as being just one. And actually, most of the mathematical community actually agrees on this being the value for zero to the zero of power when dealing with functions of that sort where our base and our exponent goes to zero from the right simultaneously. And that's basically it. So just a little uh, glance of what could come in the near future, analysis, limits, etc. But for now, when it comes to algebraic expressions and zero to the zero of power, it's just not defined because we just can't really meaningfully assign a value to this whole thing. And that's basically it. I hope this was satisfying to you, this explanation. I hope you learned something new from it. If you know about someone who needs math help in some way, please refer them to this channel. Also tell your teacher about this channel. Maybe he's interested in it too and can recommend it to other students of his. Other than that, I thank you guys for watching. Go over to the main channel, check out the higher mathematics if you are interested, okay? Higher mathematics is a lot of fun and there's so much behind it. So yeah, keep watching on the other channel if you're done with all the videos here. And now until next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao.